In this PowerPoint, we'll discuss chemical equilibrium and how it relates to reaction rates. We've already introduced the concept of dynamic equilibrium when we discussed vapor pressure and evaporation. Evaporation is a reversible process, and this means that molecules of any liquid can evaporate and go into the gas phase. At the same time, the gas molecules can condense back into the liquid phase. When the two processes are in equilibrium in a closed container, we reach a steady state condition of constant vapor pressure. For every molecule that evaporates into the gas phase, a molecule condenses back into the liquid phase. Another way of stating this is that the rates of evaporation and condensation are equal. This idea of equilibrium between reversible processes applies to a wide variety of chemical reactions, not just phase changes. So many chemical processes have the potential to go in the reverse direction, from products back into reactants. What varies is how far the forward and the reverse processes go relative to each other. So when processes are reversible, there is a point at which the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction, and we get a steady state or relatively constant amount of our reactants in our products. And this state is known as dynamic equilibrium. So here's a simple example of a non-chemical reversible process. Students going in and out of a classroom. So in this situation, we have five students in our class and eight students outside in the hallway. Every minute, three students leave the hall and enter the classroom. But at the same time, three different students leave the class and go into the hall. And because the three students leaving each area are replaced by three different students coming in, the total number of students in the class in the hallway remain constant. Now, they may not be the same consistent students in each area, but the total number remains constant. And this is what dynamic equilibrium is. We have two opposing processes that are continuing to occur, but because they occur at the same rate, the amounts, in this case of students in our classroom and hallway, remain constant, remain steady state. It's the same general idea with chemical systems. So now let's look at a reversible chemical system. The double arrow pointing in both directions between the reactants and products indicates that this process is reversible and can go in both directions. So in the forward direction, one molecule of dinitrogen tetroxide decomposes to produce two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. In the reverse direction, two molecules of nitrogen dioxide combine to form one molecule of the dinitrogen tetroxide, N2O4. Now, both the forward and reverse processes have rates associated with them. And we can characterize these rates using rate laws. So in these general rate laws, the forward rate is equal to the forward rate constant, which we're going to label Kf times the concentration of our reactant for the forward process, N2O4. The reverse process rate law, so the rate of the reverse reaction is going to be equal to the rate constant for that reverse process, which we're going to label K sub R, times the reactant in the reverse process, which is the nitrogen dioxide. And in this case, it is second order with respect to nitrogen dioxide, so it's squared. So imagine a situation where we start out with just our reactant for the forward process, dinitrogen tetroxide, in a sealed tube. And this is our sealed glass tube. N2O4 is actually a colorless gas, so it appears clear. In the circle below it, we see a drawing of the molecules of N2O4. And the two graphs to the left of it represent the concentration of our reactant and product over time on the top and the reaction rates for the forward and reverse processes on the bottom. And there are larger versions of those blown up down here so we can actually see a little bit more detail. 
We're starting at time zero, so I'm going to try to draw in a line just to indicate that's not quite time zero, but you get the idea. At time zero, we're starting with only N204 in our tube, and so you see that we've only got N204 here, the blue line, whereas the red line starts at a zero concentration for the NO2 product. And this, of course, influences the rate of the forward and reverse processes. We start out with a relatively high rate at time zero for our forward process, again represented with the blue line, but because we have none of the nitrogen dioxide to influence the reverse process, our rate for the reverse process starts at zero. Now let's move forward a little in time. So here we see the forward reaction has been going at a uh, relatively fast rate. And as a result, some of our product NO2 is now present in the, uh, in the glass tube. And NO2, nitrogen dioxide gas, is actually brown. So we see brown color developing inside of our tube. Now, in terms of our concentrations, we're not quite at equilibrium yet. So we're somewhere in this range on these blown up graphs. And what we see is that we have developed uh, nitrogen dioxide. So the concentration of nitrogen dioxide is increasing. And because that forward reaction is going forward, we're using up the dinitrogen tetroxide. So the N2O4 concentration in blue is decreasing. And the rates then are also being influenced as this concentration of N2O4 decreases the forward process. The rate of it also decreases. And as the concentration of NO2 increases, the rate of the reverse process, NO2, increases as well. So they're coming towards each other. At this point, they're not quite equal to each other, though. The rate of the forward uh, decomposition of N2O4 is still faster than the rate of the reverse process, which is the combination of NO2. Now, eventually, the rate of the forward reaction will decrease and the rate of the reverse reaction will increase until they are equal. And at this point, we say that the reaction has reached equilibrium. So uh, that means that the forward and the reverse processes are still going on. Molecules of N2O4 are still decomposing and molecules of NO2 are recombining. But because every molecule of N2O4 that decomposes is replaced by two molecules of NO2 recombining, the net result is that we achieve steady state concentrations of N2O4 and NO2 in our tube. So the color is now a consistent shade of brown. We have relatively uh, steady, not necessarily equal, but steady concentrations of our reactants in our products. So at equilibrium, you kind of see on our graph here that now our um, curves for concentration of both NO2 and N2O4 have leveled off, so steady state. And we also have equal rates of the forward and the reverse process. So in this particular reaction, you want to notice that the concentration of the product, NO2, is actually higher at equilibrium than the remaining reactant, N2O4. When this happens, we say that this reaction favors the products or the forward reaction. Each particular reversible process is unique. There are other scenarios and reactions where uh, the reverse process is favored. And in these cases, the concentration of the reactant will be larger than the concentration of the product. It's important to remember that equilibrium does not mean equal concentrations. It only means equal rates. Some reactions reach equilibrium only after almost all of the reactant molecules are consumed. And these reactions, we say, favor the products at equilibrium. Other reactions reach equilibrium when only a small percentage of the reactant 
molecules are consumed, and as a result, only a small concentration of products will form. We say that these reactions favor the reactants at equilibrium.